Hi, welcome to this video abstract of my working paper. I'm Charlie Kai from University of Liverpool. In this paper, we study economic uncertainty exposure and cross-sectional returns, especially differentiating mispricing from ambiguity premium effect. What do we know about risk and uncertainty? A topic has been studied by the American economist Frank Knight in his doctoral thesis back in 1921. The main difference is related to the probability of distribution of an event. If the future is unknown with a no probability distribution of all possible outcomes in that event, this refers to as a risk. However, if the probability distribution is unknown, it refers to uncertainty. Importantly, Knight points out that while risk can be managed and insured against, uncertainty is handled by judgment and unequally distributed ability. Economic uncertainty implies the future outlook for the economy is unpredictable. It can arise from a large episodes of events such as the COVID-19 pandemic, the US presidential election, Brexit, the 2008 financial crisis. Or it can also be small episodes of concerns about a country's GDP inflation and unemployment outlook. How economic uncertainty affect investors and asset price? During a period of high economic uncertainty, we normally have two observations. First, the tug of war between optimists and pessimists in the market is intensified. Herschelifer argues that increased uncertainty leaves more room for investors to follow their own subjective estimations and ignore the objective evaluation. This will amplify the behavior bias. Furthermore, due to short sale constraint, the market will reflect in general optimist view rather than pessimist view. Therefore, overpriced is more likely. As Horn and Sarah's model shows that firms that are more sensitive to aggregate disagreement will be more likely to experience overpricing and hence have a lower expected return. The intensified tug of war during the high uncertainty period can be exemplified by the record breaking daily gains and losses in this example of S&P 500. We can see three out of the top 20 losses are from March 2020, when the pandemic began. And the two of the top 20 gains are also from the same period. Especially, we see a loss of 9.51% on March 12, which is closely followed by a similar gain the day after. This type of large disagreement during a short period of time is not only applied to the COVID crisis, but also observed in other uncertainty periods such as 1929 and 2008. Second, facing increasing uncertainty, some investors prefer to watch at the sidelines by moving their money out of the equity market temporarily and watching for bargains for their long-term investments. As Knight point out, people dislike uncertainty more than risk. As an illustration of uncertainty aversion, we plot an economic policy uncertainty index and the net equity fund flow on Bloomberg. We can see that they check each other closely in the opposite directions, especially during the periods of high economic uncertainty. We hypothesize that economic uncertainty exposure has two effects. First, economic uncertainty exposure induces disagreements among investors, which amplifies investors' be belief bias. Social constraint will make overpricing more likely than underpricing. On average, this will lead to a negative expected return for stocks which have a higher exposure to economic uncertainty. 
We call this mispricing effect. The second channel is economic uncertainty exposure will lead to ambiguity in the future, which affect investors' preference. And investors who dislike ambiguity or uncertainty will demand a higher return. Therefore, they will sell off the asset and lower their price at the moment, which induce a positive expected return in the future. We call this ambiguity premium effect. Note that these two effects are opposite to each other. The challenge is to differentiate the mispricing from ambiguity premium effect. And this is what we do. For the mispricing effect, we expect that economic uncertainty exposure amplify existing mispricing phenomenon measured by mispricing index of Stumble et al. If we double sort the stock independently by mispricing and economic uncertainty exposure, we will expect that the mispricing effect measured by the long shot portfolio should increase with the uh, economic uncertainty exposure. We can visualize the mispricing effect in these figures. The alpha from an upland farm and French six factor model for the five quantiles increase with the exposure. Especially, there is 9% annualized mispricing alpha in the highest economics uncertainty exposure group. This is more than double of the univariate mispricing effect. This result supports our hypothesis that economic uncertainty amplified mispricing. For ambiguity premium effect, in a group of stocks that are least affected by the over or underpricing, we expect that the economic uncertainty exposures and the expected return relationship will reflect mainly the ambiguity premium effect. In other words, the non-mispricing group alpha should increase with the economic uncertainty exposure. And this will lead to a positive ambiguity premium when we take the difference between these two, as we show here. Similarly, we can visualize the ambiguity premium effect in this chart. The alpha for the middle mispricing group, which is neither over or under pricing according to the mispricing index, increases with the economic uncertainty exposure. The high minus low generate an annualized premium of 4.2% with a T of 2.17. This supports our second hypothesis that there is a positive risk ambiguity premium exists after controlling for mispricing. We have the following four contributions. First, we show that mispricing and risk premium explanation of factor pricing need not to be mutually exclusive. We identify one common source of uncertainty that influence many different anomalies and also carry an observable risk premium. Second, previous literature find inconclusive evidence of ambiguity or uncertainty premium. Controlling for mispricing, the ambiguity premium is positive. A positive ambiguity premium provides support to theoretical models and also consistent with the general view that people dislike uncertainty and should be compensated by a positive premium. Third, we identified economic uncertainty exposure as a common mispricing component across anomalies in the market, which is also different from but com complement to investor sentiment and arbitrage risk. Finally, our work have practical implications. The economic uncertainty exposure can be used as a new factor 
to be part of an advanced benchmark model for sophisticated investors to use in evaluating and selecting funds. Thank you very much for watching. We are looking forward to your comments and suggestions. This paper is available to download from SSRN. Take care and see you next time.